Yeah, spur back in the booth, y'all. It's been about a year since I've done anything. i just been doing other stuff, you know. But I'm back at it now. Got this bike I'm finna go on and hook up. It had a little damage on the side. I done took one side off. Got it over here. I thought I was gonna have fiberglass, but he found another one, so I ain't gonna have to do too much to it, but sand it down, spot put it, and paint it. Then get ready to take the rest of it up, on off. Ain't much to it. Little spots like this. Just sand it down. A little spot put it here now. That should take care of it. All right, let me finish taking it apart, then I'm gonna cut you back on. much got everything off of it like I want it. I think I'm gonna leave the gas tank on it and paint it with the gas tank on the frame. Just mask everything else up. Just paint it like that. But I got everything else off of it. Got all the pieces laying over here. That piece there, I'm gonna do away with it. But everything else, I'm gonna have to sand down and get ready to prime it. Let me get that going, I'm gonna cut you back on. I done pulled it out the booth. I'm finna get ready to start sanding this gas tank. I ain't wanna keep it in the booth and get all that dust in there, so I just pulled it on out. But I got me a DA and some 320 grit sandpaper. That's all you're gonna need on something like this because the paint is in good condition. The only thing I'm trying to do is get it smooth and scratch it up so the primer stick to it. I might find some pinholes here and there. I'm just gonna fill it with glaze and put it. Alright, let me show you what I'm doing. See what that 320 will do for you. That's all you need. 
that primer gonna stick to it real good. I gotta hit this spot over. Any way you see where it's shining at, you gotta go on and dull it on and off. I gotta sand it down all the way around. Just around the edges, I'm gonna have to do it with my hand. So I don't scratch up, you know, other spots that I don't want to. But it might be some spots need to be hit again, but you wanna get to a blow hose and blow it off so you'll see what you need to hit. See this spot there? Where it's shining at, I gotta hit that again. But I can do that when I hand sign it. Right here. Hitting this here with the 320. Gonna take it inside. It's gonna get dark, but I'm gonna take it inside. I'm gonna start working on this part here. Getting this stick up. I'm gonna hit this outside with 320, but I'm gonna have to go with something like 180, maybe 220 to get it, just to knock this paint line down. Also, I hit this part over here too. I still gotta get up in this with my hand because they painted this part black. I might go back with black. Or I might just paint the whole thing the same color. But I'm gonna have to do this with my hand, with my fingers. I got this one here left. That one. And this one. And I think that's it. Get to a razor blade, start it, just peel it on off. Very simple. I done finished getting the decal up. So what's next, you can get you some wax and grease remover, but I'm gonna use some lacquer thinner. But you wanna get all this adhesive up because you don't wanna start sanding it because it's just gonna clog up your, your sandpaper. You're just gonna have to keep on changing your sandpaper. So you wanna get it up. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Once I get it up, I'm gonna start sanding it with some 320. And you see this here? I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can find it. It's like stress marks from where this piece was flexing. You want to make sure you sand that down real smooth because if you don't, it's going to be in your paint. It look like crow's feet. You can tell they painted it, then they put the decal on, then they cleared it. Because you can see how this lack of them is just pulling up the paint. There ain't no clear over this paint right here where the sticker was. But that's how they done it. You can do it all kind of ways, sorts of ways, a couple of ways, you know. I ain't decided how I'm gonna do mine now. He was gonna go with a base coat, clear coat. But I think I got some candy that I've been having. I think we're gonna go with it. Give up. 
So what's next? I'm going to get my DA with some 320. And I'm going to get this paint line up. Because you can feel it. You don't want to be able to feel anything when you run your hand across. Because if you do, you're going to see it in your paint. So let's get that started. You see how I'm feather edging that? You want to run your hand across and don't feel nothing. This is what I do. I look away, then I run my hand. You don't want to look at it because the eyes can fool you. Just want to turn your head and then run your hand across. Smooth like a feather. Turn it down all the way over with 320. I got this feather edge. But you still want to put some prime on it because you want to make sure you ain't got no line nowhere. I can still feel one right here. So I'm going to prime it up, just this little area here. I was going to prime the whole bike, but he changed his mind, so he don't want to spend that much money. So I'm just going to prime this, then we're going to shoot the base over the rest of it. But I'm going to use this primer I found in the shop. This can primer. I know somebody might say why he using can primer. But it worked though. I'm just gonna spray up in here, feather edge it on out with the primer. But I'm gonna clean it off first. I'm gonna wet it down, wash it, then I'm gonna spray the primer. You want to put light coats on. Make sure you don't pile it on because it ain't going to lay right. Then it's going to pull up. Light coats. Remember that. Let it dry. Then come back and put you another coat on. Remember, light coat, third coat, let's drive to the touch. You can see a little land right here. Let me see, can I get you? See it, see that there? That'll be all right because once I wet sand it, I should be able to get them lands there out. There's another one up in here. But I can wet sand that out. Everything else should be good to go. Even if I can't wet sand, I can put some little glaze and put in it. That'll take care of that. One other spot that I seen when he laid the bike down, it kind of scarred this up right here. Took it down past the primer. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this with a little primer. Then I should be good. I'm going to let that dry and then put about one or two more coats on. Then I'll cut you back on. Moving on to the next task. We're gonna go ahead and scotch spray everything. 7447 Maroon Scotch Bright. 
It's gonna look like this here. Very fine. We're gonna do all the spots that we couldn't get with the DA. Around the edges. Little spots on the tank. Around up in here. Gonna hit all this with the scotch bright and some spots that I miss with the DA that's still shining. I'm gonna hit it with the scotch bright. Just take your piece and cut it in squares. You can either cut it or tear it. It's an old piece here, but it's gonna look something like this. You wanna get it? And just go over the shiny spots, dull it off. That's when you know you can move on to the next spot. That's all it's gonna take. The only thing you're doing is scuffing up the shiny spot because if you try to paint where it's shine at, the paint ain't gonna stick to it. You're just trying to get something the paint can grab onto. Got my DA. I'm working on this primal spot here. I'm just feather edging the primal. You can either wet sand it, but I'm using 320 sandpaper, so. It'll work just as well as wet sanding it. Wet sanding might get a little, might get it a little bit more smoother than this 320. But this 320 fine, it ain't gonna leave no scratches once you lay the base coat. It's gonna be smooth. So this will work just as well as wet sanding with 500. I just wanted to show you this before I move on to the next step. You remember them spots I said? It was like a line, little pinholes here now. I went on and put some glaze and put it on them spots there. See, you just want to get a little bit on your finger and just rub it in the spot. But the main thing, you want to make sure this glaze and put it dry before you start trying to sand it. Because if you don't, it's just going to lift up. When you try to sand, it's going to lift up. So make sure it's dry before you start sanding it. But when it's dry, I could do it. I could sand it, dry sand it, or I could wet sand it. But, you know, whatever fits you best. I might wet sand it with some 400 or 500, just this little spot here. The rest are good to go for base coat. Just wanted to show you that. About to wrap it up on this sanding situation. I got all my pieces glazed with the glaze and put it. I'm 
What I'm finna do now, got me a free little sanding. Got a sanding block and some sandpaper 320. I'm finna go ahead and hit this here with the sandpaper. Then on my flat surfaces, like over here, I'm gonna use this little sponge block. I'm gonna go ahead and take this sand into the next level, which it really don't have to be done, but I'm gonna go ahead and sand my primal spots and my little glazing putty spots over there. I'm gonna go ahead and sand it, but I got me a wet and dry sanding pad. I couldn't find my good one, so I went on to grab this eight up one. And I got some 400 wet sandpaper. I'm gonna drop both of them in my water. I'm gonna let it soften up for a few minutes. Then I'm gonna go ahead and sand these spots. I've been slacking again, YouTube. Last night I planned to come out here first thing in the morning. But now it's like 1.30. I finally got out to bed. I should have been out here, but I'm gonna get it started. Really, the only thing I got left is now is taking everything out, washing it down, getting it good and clean. Then I'm gonna straighten the paint booth out some. Try to dust it down. Get all the dust that I can. I got heaters from last one in here. I got the lawnmower in here. I'm gonna pull it out. Little paint cans and sandpaper here now. But I'm gonna go on and pull everything out, try to straighten the paint booth up. Then I'll be ready for some paint. I'm washing all the pieces down with soap and water, dish detergent. I done tucked some of them already on the inside of the booth. I'm gonna let them just dry sitting up on the stands. I'm trying to position them so I can walk around all the pieces without bumping into the other one. I might maneuver the stands around once I get all the pieces in, see how much room I got. But let me get back to what I was doing. I got all my pieces in the booth now. I've been waiting on the owner to bring the decals because I'm gonna do a little um, custom work to it with the decals. I'm going to spray my base, then I'm going to put the decal down, then I'm going to spray over the decal, then pull the decal up. Then I'm going to spray my can on top of it. So that's what's really been holding me up, waiting on the decal. But I'm going to go ahead and spray the base now, because he said he should be bringing the decals in about an hour or so. So it should be good. I'm going to wipe everything down with some wax and grease removal then I'm gonna cut you back on wait wait a minute let me show you my wax and grease removal prep all
Okay, we're gonna scratch this coat of base here. As I went to look at it, it's not covering like I want it to, which I should have put a seal on it. As you can see, this is just the first coat, which I'm gonna, I'm gonna put decals back on it. I'm gonna paint the decals on it, but that'll cover that up, but I still should have put a seal on it. But the owner didn't want to uh, pay for the prime, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway because I really done wasted up a coat of base and I don't want to waste no more. So I'm gonna go ahead and seal it. Then I'm gonna go ahead and shoot the base over. I got my sealer in the cup. I'm gonna spread out this side of Jet 1000 RP. I don't think you can see it because the light blurring it. But that's it right there. It's a 1.3 tip on it. This one I'm gonna be spraying it out of. This two coats of Scylla here. I had went on and hit it with some 400 also. Cause I had let it sit overnight. And I just knocked a little overspray down. That came from the other pieces. It's time for that base now. I hope this is gonna be the last time. Three coats of base here. It's called red gold metallic. I'm gonna get ready to lay out for my decals now. I'm gonna put the decals where I need them to be. Then I'm gonna mask everything else off. Then I'm gonna paint the decals on. Not necessarily paint the decals on, but I'ma paint where the decals gonna be at, then I'ma pull the decal up. That's gonna leave my paint. Then I'ma spray the candy over it. Before you put the decal on, you want to make sure you take it off. 
because they're gonna have over spray metallics then laid back over the paint. Make sure you take it off because you want a good seal around that decal because you don't want no paint to leak through up under it. See how I tuck the inside of the ladders out? Once you do that, you want to get you some masking tape and lay it over the whole decal because that's what's going to hold everything in place when you start lifting it up off the backing because if you don't do that you try to lay it like that everything gonna be cricket so you wanna mask it off first something you can see through don't get no blue tape because you can't see through the tape once you get the decal where it need to be just go ahead and pull the masking tape up I got all the decals on. You might see some wrinkles around the edges, but that don't really matter because you ain't gonna paint nowhere around the edge here. You wanna concentrate right here where the ladders and Suzuki at. You gotta make sure that's sealed because you don't want no paint to leak through up on the See like this here, the wrinkles here. I could have got them out if I would have cut the decal a little bit smaller around the edges, but I'm gonna mask everything else off. So you wanna leave some kind of lip so you have something to tape it to. Got everything masked off. Like I said, you wanna make sure it's sealed. See like right there? I put the mask and tape where I need to paint at. Glad I caught that. Just wanna look it over, make sure. Ain't no mask and tape inside the paint line where you're gonna paint at. Make sure it's sealed real good. Spray the white paint on. You can't really tell what it's gonna look like because I haven't tucked the decal up. But I'm gonna take the decal up and give you a look at it. I done finished painting on the words. About time for some candy now. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and spray my candy. As y'all can see, I laid my first coat of candy on real light. That's what you want to do. You don't want to go heavy, you want to go light. And you can see it look kind of blotchy here and there. But that's fine because your next coat is going to cover. It's going to start filling in. Your second coat and your third coat. Because if you want to lay it on real heavy, you're going to get runs. So, start off real light. Your first coat needs to be light.
three coats of candy. It's just the candy, no clear coat. I went on to unmask this because I'm gonna shoot the clear over that also. I'm going with that all candy wet wet plus for the clear coat. It's about to go down y'all. That all candy wet wet plus. It's the final stage. You mix it two to one. Two part clear, one part activator. You find your two to one on your cup. You got it right here. Just say I want five. I go up to the five with the clear. Then I go up to the next five with the activator. Or you could just go over here where the ounces at. Just say two to one. I go up to the 12. Then half of 12 is six. So add that. That'll be 18. So I go up to the 18 with the activator. I hope you understood that. But I'm gonna spray it with this Saddle Jet 4400. Mini Jet is a 4400 Mini Jet. It's a RP, it got a 1.2 tip.